<laughs> straight shooter, straight through her, nigga. Dead squad up, nigga. Official. Free real, uh. free mode. Juju just served 12 flat on a murder case. Uh. Got her eight months later, caught another murder case. Uh. Clap city niggas, clap city spur the murder rate. Uh. Not just did seven straight on attempted murder, man. Rally rail got 16 for the same thing. Squad a guy that I was in county jail with, and he was a brother. He was not affiliated though. But I go to him, I'm like, hey man, where's you know, where's the G's at? So he points me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So I go, I go see the homie. I'm like, what's up? You know, this is who I am, this is where I'm from, with the whoop. And to be honest, bro, it was I could tell that I could tell there was some some tension between us. You know what I mean? Some right. some you know, uncomfortability. It wasn't like it was supposed to be. Exactly. They wasn't accepting me like they like they were supposed to be. So the one good piece of uh, advice and the one one thing that he said at that time was, you're going to have to move out that cell. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, good looking out. I appreciate that, G, 100. So uh, basically my own, what I consider as my own people, man, you know, they was, they was really kind of shunning at first. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning was I was white. I wasn't from Seattle. I wasn't a G from Washington State, period. And so they really didn't, they didn't know me, you know? And at the time, in my head, I'm like, man, what's up with y'all, man? Y'all right. was tripping, man. This ain't the way, this ain't the, way the game go. Right. And uh, so I get back up to my cell, and sure enough, man, this white boy, he, youngster, big down, skinhead, and uh, his people approached me as well. And I'm like, hey, listen, uh, we're on two different sides of the fence, bro. You know what I mean? I don't rock with y'all. I'm not with that. I'm a gangster disciple. And they and they said, and so then he, my celly, tells me, hey, man, you got to get up at this room. And so instantly, my defense mechanism of being a man and you telling me right. what I'm going to do. Who you talking to? Room, yeah. yeah. Who are you talking to? Now in my head, I'm already knowing I'm I'm out this room because this this ain't this ain't where I'm supposed to be. But you're not gonna tell me what to do. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? So we we have our little issue. You know we handle our business. You get off. We, you, yeah. you ain't got a sugarcoat it for my for my for my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we tell we, you to get we, out. We get you, off. Get off on him. Yeah. We get off. We get off on each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh that's called a fight. Yeah, yeah. And then uh so then after that, uh I go to the uh I go to the yard and I'm discussing with the, the, the guy that's holding the keys to the car, you know, what's going on and this and that. And even then it was still kind of just eh, you know, just kind of giving me that Heisman a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. like, man. So I move in with a homie. It was actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say he's a homie. He's, he, he was, he was a, uh, he was a brother, but he was, uh, he was not affiliated really, but he, mm -hmm. he, but he was, uh, from the hilltop of Tacoma, which is all Crips. That's, oh, okay. he, he himself wasn't affiliated, but he knew everybody. And he yeah, was from a Crip neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was from a you affiliated. You just not a member. Exactly. <laughs> and he, man, he was cool, man. Shout out to Big Terry, man. He, he's doing like 52 years on double murder charge, man. You'll get back. You'll get back. Yeah, Wait yeah. For Wait for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I move in with him. And then and I'm on a medium custody uh, yard at this time. And you don't, at, at this particular prison, and even on any medium yard I've been on, which I've been on like four of them out here. Right. It's, right. it's not, you don't. It's not politic, and, and I say this even about even about our closed custody, even our max custody, we're not politicking like California is. You know what I mean? It, right. I mean, there's politics. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like California. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. You're not going to the showers with somebody uh, standing there, you know, watching posts for you. You're not. Right. You ain't doing that type of stuff. So I'm in the shower. Uh, in the showers, it's it's a it's basically it, this is a brand new prison too. It just opened in two thousand one. Right. So it's it's an open. Uh, it looks like a big warehouse, and then you got cells with doors on them. 
and the showers are in the kind of in the corners. They're kind of in the cut. So you can, they got cameras in there, but they ain't ever watching these cameras. So you can right. really, you can really get it in if you need to, you know, as far as fighting and shit. Right. So I'm in the shower and next thing you know, I, I turn around and I see, I see these three dudes coming, these white, white boys coming. Now there's only four showers. And there's two of them being used. Mm -hmm. Me ain't no point for three people to be else. coming. Yeah, so I'm I'm already knowing what's coming. So they jump me, and I get broomsticks, and I get mop sticks, and I get all the you know they they lump me up. They lump me up real good. So at this point, and it, my homeboys didn't do nothing about it, man. Nothing. At this point, I've had enough from both sides. So I go out to the yard, and I go to the homies, and I'm like, listen, I call them all out. And I just tell them, you know, listen, y'all, this is some faulty-ass shit. You know what I mean? Y'all wrong. I, I go to the war with each and, each and every one of you brothers right now. I said, just because you don't know me from the streets or I'm not from up here, you know, I'm a member of this organization, and yeah, what you're absolutely. doing is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so there was this little there was this little five-foot-one, uh, his name, D, little D, and he's from Georgia, and he's a little white dude, and he's he's a gangster disciple. So he pulls me to the side, and we, you know, we spend some laps, and I tell him what's up, and he's like, nah, nah, man, that's not cool. So he's actually really close to the uh, to the key holder, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, some things get worked out, straightened out. And after that point, after that, after me doing that, I didn't have no problems, bro. You know what I mean? And it it was uh, it was all you know downhill, as they say. After that, it was you know I didn't have no issues, you know. So basically, after that incident in the shower and the homies handling their business, uh, you didn't have no more no more problems like that, at least. No. During your time. No. Yeah, not um, like that. Did 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 you end up getting a chance to get your run back with the um the dudes that did come in the shower? No, and the reason why is because they got shipped off at the time. Uh, Washington State was doing a lot of the contract prison stuff, right? And so they get they they were sent out of state. Okay, so they got lucky. <laughs> they yeah yeah they, yeah they they got lucky. I would but, say they got uh, lucky because win lose a draw, you know, Caspi won that run back. Like hey, yeah, you absolutely. Fuck me, I need that. I need that yeah. one. I need that head yeah. up. <laughs> absolutely. But, so uh, um, there, yeah, they. Go ahead. they there was some there were some other uh issues you know that took place behind it but the yeah. the main three was not yeah. was not you know what you don't make it is satisfying exactly uh, uh, it's like uh, i got a uh i got jumped by um uh, some some individuals in a in a shoe yard and uh um i never got to get back at them because of the politics of the situation yeah and i never i never I used to, when, when I got, like, if I hit a yard and one of those dudes that was there came to the yard, I used to just be lurking, waiting for a reason. Just waiting yeah. for a reason. Please give me a reason. And because I was politically inclined, I, I couldn't just, oh, he here, I'm going to get on him. It doesn't exactly. work like that in California. Yeah. Unless, yeah. You rat, that, unless you're a rat or something like that on me, then it do work like that. But other than yeah. that, just because some gang stuff went down over there, I can't hold that grudge over here and keep it. Yeah. Not unless that, there's a reason. And that's and you know what that's so crazy to me how right? you know that that California politics is very uh man I watch a couple different uh channels man yeah and that that California politics is crazy to that's me that's like bro. that's like if we get into a melee with 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 some crips right here right in this in this prison right mm -hmm. and 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 one of them get me let's say one of them get me well in my mm -hmm. mind it's like okay well I want to run that back yeah. at another time. Yeah. But if I come back out and take off on him after the riot's over, after everybody squashed it and we say we not tripping no more, and I come out and I get off on that dude, the first thing my people are gonna be like, well, what you get off on him for? Yeah, they gonna ride with me, but then it's gonna be like, are you accountable for why we just got into some old shit? Why exactly. we get into it? Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's, there's gotta be there's gotta be a reason. Oh yeah, you can't just yeah. I can't just it's not the streets. We not gang banging just because you Crips. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this ain't the street prison. The prison politics in California is way different than the street politics in California. Absolutely. Because you know, this politics out here on these streets too, but it's way different in prison because of course we have to um, try to keep as many people on the yard as possible for numbers. 
Absolutely. But so we got blacks fighting blacks. It's, it's so racially motivated that you can't yeah. really have, ain't too many people condoning black on black violence. It happens, right. but you know, if it's yeah. a one-on-one, you know, you kind of get away with it as long as nobody gets involved. Or if you call a cat on a fade, you know, you can't just be, it's just so many intertwined, like a Chinese yeah. fish puzzle, man. It's, yeah, it is. But, yeah. So you end up doing your time and you end up, you know, getting out, going back. And your second bid, you end up going to a, 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 a yard that you want to tell me about. Yeah. Or you so want to tell the, the second, viewers about. So, yeah. So the second time down, I, you know, I get out. I have, you know, I have a little mishap. I go back for, again right. for, for another robbery charge. Uh, the first five years uh, that I'm down, um, I'm just, you know, I'm doing, I'm just doing my, my regular prison program. You know, I'm right. at the poker table. I'm at the pinochle table. I'm gambling on it. I gamble on everything in prison. You know what I mean? I, I, man, that's what. It's I a gamble, dangerous bro. game. It's a dangerous it is. Game. It is. Yeah. And, it, and it's one thing that I tell people, uh, I encourage people to not get involved with if you go to the penitentiary. Unless you, unless you just have, unless you got money like that and you know you got money like that, that's yeah. just one thing. But, man, don't gamble, man. Stay away from the gambling, bro. Yeah, gambling and, and don't borrowing. gamble on ass. Don't, don't gamble, gamble on your gamble ass. No, no, no. Because somebody might so, come to get it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, okay, hold on. Clear up. Just for y'all who don't know, gambling on your ass means gambling broke. So you just betting on you. It ain't no gay shit. It ain't no weird shit like that. It's just gambling on your ass means you just gambling, hoping that you win. Basically, you ain't got no yeah. money to back it up. All you got is you. And you yeah. might have to back it up. Exactly. So yeah. Clear that up. Yeah. 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 Good, good, good point. Uh, so, uh, I'm doing my regular prison routine, man, and I'm at Walla Walla at the at, at uh, five years into my bid. I'm at Walla Walla uh, State, which is which is Washington State Penitentiary, mm -hmm. and I hear about this program, and it's a program that's not only um, on this side of the map. So Walla Walla, I, I live in Olympia, uh, which is Thurston County, which is on the the west side of the state. Right. And Walla Walla is clear on the east side of the state. Okay. So my main purpose at this time is, man, this is a program where I can get back to the, you know, to the city. So I can get right. back to, you know, visits and things like this. So. Hold I, on one second. I, Hold on. Yeah. Sorry. So you, 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 you in Walla Walla, you, your main uh, um, vision and hope is to try to get closer back to home, to the other side, to Olympia. Absolutely. So my main, my whole objective in the beginning was I'm going to get back over to the other side of the mountains. So I asked my counselor to put me in for this program. Right. And uh, she puts me in, I get accepted. And I, and I get, I get over here. And when I first get over here, I'm just, I'm so happy that I'm right. on this side of the mountains. I'm not caring about nothing this program's talking about. I'm right. not caring about nothing. But when's the visiting room open? When's the visiting <laughs> room open? So I uh <laughs> so I get this program and basically what it is is a cognitive thinking uh program. You know what I mean? Right. And the what you got to do every day is you got to go to these two meetings every day in the morning and the afternoon. And then you got to take three psychoeducational classes okay. a week that last for an hour. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, the perks of this was you were in a unit of, there was only, like, when I first got there, there was only like 45 people in this entire unit. So the perks was you chances are you had a single man cubicle, you know what I mean? Uh, the phones was always open. There were six phones in the unit. They were always open. The JPay was always open. Uh, you know what I mean? It was What's that? JPay is always open like how you guys order canteen and shit. So, well, the J no, the JPay is uh JPay is like messaging. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, so like in the feds, they, I think that, I think it's core links in the feds. Uh, okay. But JPay is like you can receive emails and pictures. They got these little tablets oh, okay. that you can get. You know what I'm saying? That's oh, all. 
Yeah. It, so, uh, and and it, it was it was just it was cool. It was a change of pace. It was way slower. You know what I mean? There's not things ain't popping off all the time. Right. Now, uh, and then, but right down the hall, right down the breezeway, you had B unit. I was in A unit, and then right down the breezeway, you had B unit, which was a a normal just you know, regular, uh, minimum custody, uh, unit. Right. So we went to, uh, we went to breakfast or, well, when I got there, yeah, they were still serving breakfast. They don't even, they don't serve breakfast up here no more. You get a, you get a boat, uh, what they call a boat with your dinner tray consists of a peanut butter jelly sandwich, a muffin, a bran bar, and a little bowl of cereal. And that's what you get for breakfast the next day. That's what you eat every day. Wait, so they serve lunch and dinner, that's it? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, lunch and dinner, that's it. But we went to, when I first got there, they they was still serving breakfast, I think, and then they cut it off. I can't remember. But you you go to lunch first every day, and on the weekends, you go to lunch and dinner first every day. Right. There was little perks in the program, you know, uh, and uh, and it, it was cool, man. But at, okay. when I first got there, I wasn't I wasn't on that, man. I was just happy right. to be there, so I was wilding out. I get in okay. some trouble, right? I get in some trouble. I end up in the hole, and I'm sitting in the hole like, damn, man, I'm about to go backwards, man. You know what I mean? And I had one of the head. Uh, people, the head psychologist of the program came and saw me and was like, I want, I want to work with you, you know, on an individual basis. Now I've tried doing therapy before in my life and that wasn't for me. You know I mean? I'm like, listen, first of all, this lady had no business in my opinion, working in a prison. She was scared of her own shadow. You know what I mean? So, and I, I remember, I remember telling her, I said, you and I don't have nothing in common. How are you going to help me? All your little textbook shit, I'm not with that. And she told me something that resonated with me and made me, made me think. And she said, you're right. I don't, I don't know what it's like to, to live your life. She says, but I am a human being and I understand emotions and feelings. And I said, ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so that resonated with me and I, I thought about that. And... She came back to see me, and I said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll work with you. Right. So then she goes and puts in a word to the CUS of the unit, which is the custody unit supervisor, mm-hmm. and to the CPM, which I don't know exactly what that stands for. But custody it's program manager? Yeah, I think, I think that's what it is, program manager, yeah, which is the big, kind of the big wig on the, on the campus. Right. They, they give me an override, and I stay. Good stuff. I start going in and seeing this, uh, she's a psychologist and I go in and I see her on Mondays and bro, it, it changed my life, man. Um, the way she, the way she worked with me and the way she, you know, brought stuff up out of me right. that, you know, I was totally opposed to doing it earlier on in my life. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. And I, uh, it started off an hour uh, a week on Monday mornings. And, and at first I would be in her 15 minutes and that's it. And she'd let me go. Mm-hmm. And it, by the time I left, I was in her office <clears throat> four days a week, which is how many days a week she worked. And I was in there for, you know, anywhere from two hours to four hours a day sometimes, you know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah. Getting that work. And especially, especially leading up to my release, man. Cause I was really, really, uh, you know, my, my anxiety was high. I had a lot of stuff going on uh, okay. on the outside world, you know, right. uh, that just, you know, I didn't know, man. I didn't know how I was going to make it. And, right. and I didn't really have a plan, uh, so to speak, because I just, I was like, I was kind of straddling the fence of what I was going to do when I got out, whether I was right. going to do good or whether I was going to go back to, you know, my old ways. Mm-hmm. But uh, during the course of all this work and taking all these classes and doing all this stuff, I went from being in the hole to a senior coordinator of this program to it's where sick. I was kind of the head dude of this program. Right. And, uh, you know, 
it, my, my mentality changed. And part of it, I think, was a small percentage of it was just, you know, age and growing up. But a larger, the, the most important part was, um, you know, the work that I put in there. Absolutely. So we got to pause real quick. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I, yeah I was, it was called the, uh, uh, man, I just said it too and I forgot it. Uh, anyways, yeah, I was the, I was the, I was the guy, the senior coordinator. Senior the coordinator, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having this responsibility uh, put me in a lane that I was not only unaccustomed to, but uh, in the beginning it was very uncomfortable because right. I go from, you know, the convict mode to now I'm sitting in with staff right. doing these meetings and doing these interviews and hiring for these other jobs, you know, and it really kind of, I don't want to say it, 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 at the end of the day, I remained a convict. But, yeah, absolutely. But it does, it does kind of change your perspective a little bit. Right. It softens you up a little bit. Softens as far, you as, up far as your mentality towards everything else other than just exactly. convict mode all the time. Exactly. Right. And so, you know, I, I did that, man. And I learned, I learned so much from the program, but not just the program, but the, the people involved in the program as well, because there were some right. highly intelligent people in this program uh, that were, you know, convicts too, mm -hmm. and that I would go and sit and have conversations with. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was crazy, bro. I just, I, I, the biggest thing for me was right. learning to think kind of outside the box and to, uh, view things uh, objectively right. and not subjectively, mm -hmm. meaning leave my opinion and feelings out of what the actual facts of the situation is. Look at it for what it is, not what you think it is. Exactly. And so um, by doing that, that allowed me to um, deal with some situations once I first got out that right. I wouldn't have been able to deal with uh, in my past. Yeah. So put more tools in your toolbox. Exactly. Absolutely. And to give a, give a quick example of that, mm -hmm. you know, I got, I got released on Valentine's day, uh, 2019. And mm -hmm. I got released knowing that at the time me and my, my then wife was not together. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but it, I didn't know that she had a live-in boyfriend. You know what I mean? And she, right. her address was the only address I had to get out to. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I released to this address. And I was able to deal with a situation that, you know, I wouldn't have been oh, able no, to yeah. deal with. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. So, uh, but my son, you know, my son was there. So it was, you know, I got to spend a whole lot of time with my son, you know, right. trying to catch up and things like that so it all worked out in the end Good and stuff. and the, and the person the person i am today yes, is sir. is not the the 25 year old you know youngster that went into the penitentiary you know back in 2007 okay so let's and, let's let's get to the meat of it man no matter what uh because we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up so what is who is uh the person we talking to today you know. So right now, man, you know, I'm, I'm still jail. And yes, sir. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a man above anything else. But, you know, I got I got my channel, man, uh, pr uh, validated prison stories. Check, check me out out there. Um, and now, man, I'm about helping people, man, helping the, 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 the youth, you know, helping and even not and not even just the youth, you know, anybody that's either going to prison, who's in prison, who's you know, just got released, whatever that case or situation, circumstances is, it's about letting people know, listen, man, you can do it. You know, right. you can make it. Um, right. And you don't have to be what the system and what other people have labeled you to be, you know, in your past. Okay. That's a good look, man. Um, So I was going to say, if you could say anything to anybody, any to the kids, what would you say? But you just said it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. If there's any shout-outs you want to send out, uh, now would be a good time to do it on the channel. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, check me out at Validated Prison Stories on YouTube. Uh, I'm also on uh, Instagram, Validated underscore Prison underscore Stories. Right. Um, and uh, man, as far as shout, you know, shout out to my big bro Dre, uh, Terry Dope. Hunt, locked up, 52 years. You're coming home soon, bro. I know you are. Right. Um, and man, to you, Nate Dog, oh, keep man. keep doing this, man. Oh, for I, sure, you know. it don't stop, brother. Thank you, I appreciate that. And 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 once again, I mean, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and coming on and sharing your story, man. Hopefully, people can understand it's more than just a, uh, it's more than the skin color, it's more than a gang affiliation, it's more than a circumstance in life. It's it, it is life, you know what I mean? And then exactly. we can learn from each other, man. And, th- and that's my point. And that's the point of what I'm trying to get across to people is that each one can teach one. We've heard OGs tell us this forever. Yep, you know I mean? absolutely. You know, so yeah. uh, once again, thanks for coming on. I'm sure we'll be in contact again. And to the kennel, man, you guys already know what it is, man. If you like what you see, man, head on over there to Validated Prison Stories, man. Check out the brother. He got some stories over there. If you want more, if you're more interested in Mr. Uh, in J.O.'s story, that's where you can catch him at. Other than that, y'all be seeing me here. Every time I post, hit that like, subscribe, and notification. If you don't do nothing else in life, man, stay loyal.